Hello, and welcome to another third grade episode of Math Matters. My name is Ms. Matthews, and today we are going to be learning about how to create and interpret data in pictographs and bar graphs. In today's lesson, we are going to learn more about the process of data collection and how we can use bar graphs and pictographs as a way to organize and make sense of the data we collect to answer the question that we are wondering. As you participate in today's lesson, think about how counting by threes can make it easier to understand data. We'll have an opportunity for you to reflect on your learning at the end of the lesson. We'll continue to work on our portrait of a graduate skills today as we record our data in bar graphs and pictographs and use our writing to keep track of our thinking and to share our ideas with others. Remember, you may have questions or make mistakes as you are learning new things today, and that's okay. You may find it helpful to write down any questions that you have while you are participating in today's lesson so that you can continue your learning with someone at home or when you talk again with your teacher. We are goal-directed and resilient learners, which means that we don't give up and we keep on trying. For today's lesson, it may be helpful to have some paper and a pencil or some crayons on hand so you can record your thinking and keep track of the data that we share. Plain paper will work great, and if you have lined paper or graph paper at home, you can use that too. We'll pause now to give you time to gather your materials. You may hear some words that are new to you today, so as we work together, listen for those words and try to make connections between the new words and what we are learning. The first word is pictograph. A pictograph is a graph that uses pictures to represent the information collected. Next is a bar graph. A bar graph is a graph that uses bars to represent the information collected. A row goes across from left to right, and a column goes up and down. Math is everywhere. Let's see if we can find the math in these pictures. What are you noticing about these three pictures? What connections can you make to the pictures? And what do you wonder when you look at these pictures? Maybe you noticed that all three have water in them. Water is coming from a faucet in one of them. There's water coming from the shower head in another. And the one in the middle is of a little boy playing in water from a hose. You may have also noticed the water toys in the background with the little boy. Some of you might be wondering, is it warm outside? Is the boy drinking the water or playing with it? Or maybe, how much water is being used with all of this water running? If you are like us, spending a lot of time at home means that we are using a lot more water at home. We do our best to conserve water, but between washing your hands, keeping dishes and clothes clean, and flushing the toilet, we use a lot of water. In order to conserve or save water, there are a few things that we can do to help. When we are washing our hands or brushing our teeth, we can turn off the water until it's time to rinse. So let's find out how much water does one person use in one day while at home. What information do you have in this pictograph? What information is missing? All the headings are missing in this pictograph. What could be some of the headings? What heading would you put here? Is your heading similar to mine? Remember, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. 
What do you think the heading should be here? Is this what you were thinking? Now let's look at all of the subheadings. How many are there? Yes, there are five subheadings. Now think about how you use the water in your home. Take a moment and write down what you think the five subheadings might be based on the title, Water Uses in the Home. These are the five subheadings, taking a shower, washing clothes, flushing the toilet, using sink faucets, and others. Which subheading do you think washing hands and brushing teeth falls under? Yes, using sink faucets. What is still missing in our pictograph? Hint, there are two things still missing. See if you can find them. Looking at our pictograph, do we know what each picture represents? No, not yet. So we need a key to give us that information. According to the key, each picture is equal to three gallons of water. What is the last thing that's missing from our pictograph? Yes, we still do not have a title for our pictograph. What would be a good title for this pictograph? The title is Amount of Water Used by One Person Each Day in the United States. Now we know about how much water is used by one person each day doing these different things with the water. Now that our pictograph is complete, let's interpret the data. What are you noticing about the data? You might have noticed that people use the most water flushing the toilet and using the sink faucet is the least used, other than other uses. You might have noticed that washing clothes is the second most amount of water. Now take a moment and write down one true statement and one false statement about the data. Here are some statements related to the pictograph. Number one, flushing the toilet uses 18 gallons of water a day for one person. Number two, washing clothes uses the same amount of water as using sink faucets and other uses. I will give you a moment to check both statements and decide if they are true or false. Let's talk about the first statement. If you count the number of pictures in the pictograph related to flushing the toilet, you count six pictures. But since each picture represents three gallons of water, you need to multiply six times three to get the answer of 18. So statement number one is true. How about statement number two? Washing clothes has five pictures, and five times three is a total of 15 gallons of water. We need to compare that to using sink faucets and other uses. Using sink faucets has three pictures, and three times three equals nine. A 
other uses has just one picture, which means three gallons of water. If we add those together, nine plus three equals 12, and 12 is not equal to 15. So number two is false. Take a moment and check the two statements that you wrote earlier. If you need assistance with checking your statements, please ask your parents for help or reach out to your teacher. Asking and answering questions is another way to help us interpret graphs. What questions can we ask about the data shown in this graph? Take a moment to jot down one or two questions. Some questions we could ask are, which activity uses the most water? Or how about, which activity uses the least water? We could even ask, how much more water is used by flushing the toilet than taking a shower? Now that we have created our pictograph and interpreted the data, let's use the same data to create a bar graph. Make sure you have your paper and pencils or crayons available. First, let's draw the X and Y axis. This is what the X and Y axis look like. It's a very large L drawn in the middle of your paper. Next, let's label the X and Y axis. Let's make the bar graph look just like the pictograph. So the vertical axis, which is the Y axis, will be labeled with water uses in the home. And the horizontal axis, which is the X axis, will be labeled water used. Now let's label the y-axis with the five different categories. What should we do next? Yes, we need to add the numbers to the x-axis related to the amount of water used. You could write down all of the numbers 1 through 20, but since each picture in the pictograph represents three gallons of water, let's just write in multiples of three. Draw hash marks and label them three, six, nine, 12, 15, and 18. So what should we do next? Good idea. Let's draw our bars. Your five bars can all be one color, or you can make them five different colors. Also, your bars should not touch each other. Make sure there's a little space between all of the bars. This is what the bar looks like for other uses. Other uses is equal to three gallons of water, so my bar stops at three. Now draw the bar for using sink faucets. See how there's a little space between the two bars? Draw your bar for flushing the toilet. Now draw your bar for washing clothes. How does your bar graph look? Remember, you don't need to make your bars different colors. That's your choice as the creator. Now let's draw the last bar for taking a shower. Now that we have finished drawing our bars, what's left to do? Look at the pictograph and see what's missing. Correct, we need a title for our bar graph. 
go ahead and write the title above the bar graph. We are almost done. What else are we missing from our bar graph? If you were thinking that we need a key, you are close. We don't need to create an actual key for the bar graph, but we are missing an important piece of the bar graph that is part of the key. What do you think it is? Yes, our bar graph does not tell us what the numbers mean. Are we measuring the water in pints, quarts, liters? What measurements are we using to measure the water in our graph? We need to add gallons to our graph. Let's add it to our label of water used. You can add in gallons in parentheses next to the water used. Now we know that the numbers represent the gallons of water. Great job making your bar graph. Take a moment and compare the pictograph and the bar graph. How are they different? How are they the same? Write a few ideas down or share your ideas with someone that is home with you right now. I notice that they are the same because they share the same information. Also, the length of the bars are similar in length to the number of pictures in the pictograph. I notice that they're different because the bar graph uses bars and the pictograph uses a picture of the gallons of water. Also, a pictograph always has a key and a bar graph does not necessarily need one. We created today's bar graph to have horizontal bars in order to match our pictograph. But you can also create a bar graph with vertical bars like the one shown here. This bar graph was created on a computer instead of drawn, but the data is the same. You learned a lot today about how to create pictographs and bar graphs. First, we created a pictograph together, and you interpreted the data. You then created your own bar graph using the same data from the pictograph. How did you do today working towards our learning goals? Reflect on your progress by selecting which emoji best matches how you're feeling about today's lesson. A smiley emoji if you got it and are feeling good. A thinking emoji if you think you understand but need more practice. And a confused emoji if you feel like you have more questions or could use some help with today's lesson. As you think about the learning goals for today, maybe there is something new you learned that you don't want to forget. Or maybe there is something we talked about today that you still have questions about. Take a minute to record your reflection on today's lesson and save them for the next time that you are able to check in with your teacher. Mathematicians are skilled communicators who are goal-directed and resilient. During our lesson today, you worked on writing to record and communicate your ideas through graphing. You also persevered or kept on trying as you learned new mathematical ideas even if it was hard. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Math Matters for third grade. My name is Ms. Matthews, and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow as we continue to learn more about data and graphing. Have a mathematical day.